What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronze Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my character build series. Today presenting to you, John Braun Whitmonkstone. I'm not gonna lie, I am so proud of what we have accomplished here, me and my Discord team, because it was brought to my attention a couple of months ago, right when Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft came out, that Monk was a very popular class but it's also legendary for its bad mechanics. It's the butt of many jokes in the optimizer community. And so it was brought to my attention that if I could create an optimized monk, that that could be really good for the channel. And so I was like, all right, let's take a pass at this. You know, I feel pretty confident in my abilities. And so I created a Kensei build that was just horrifying to me when I was running the numbers. And I went ahead and finished it and, you know, did all the calculations and stuff just to get a sense of what was going on here. And it was not pretty. <laughs> and I tinkered with it for a while, uh, by which I mean many hours. And finally, I was like, man, all right, I'm, I've lost interest in this. Uh, let's do something else. Um, but I don't like admitting defeat. So I had kind of come back to drifted back to it uh, every now and then just trying out different things, thinking about different ideas, approaches, ways to fix just the issues that I was starting to perceive and nothing ever worked. <laughs> um, so I didn't, you know, I just kept putting it on the back burner as something that I wanted to get back to someday. Cause again, I felt like I could crack it eventually, but it was taking a while. And then my last video was really well received. The genie lock was my most popular video so far. So thanks to everybody for that. And I thought, man, I'd really like to follow that up with something epic. And what could be more epic than actually optimizing the monk and making it good? And so I thought, all right, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this again. And yeah, tried a couple of approaches, not not working. But then I got the inkling of an idea as I was actually starting to get a better sense of uh, how the monk was structured and where its weaknesses were. Um, I kind of thought of a direction that might, you know, work, that might just, you know, in theory, get the job done. And my team, you know, took that ball and ran with it. And together we created a really good optimized monk. We did it. This thing is strong. It's not just decent. It's not just passable. It's not just good for a couple of rounds and then bad all the rest of the time. This is a build that is strong all the time and has those flashes of cool Monk Nova goodness that we all love and expect and want out of a monk. So I am just so proud of what we've done here and super excited to show it to you. Again, thanks to the boys in the Discord. The quality of the stuff that we're putting out now is so high. Thanks to them. And I am so appreciative of it. If you want to be a part of that, check out the Patreon. And uh, if you don't, you know, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, comment, share if you want to support the channel. Without further ado, let's take a look at... Oh my god! That's right, I forgot to say. At one point, one of the guys in my Discord was like, you know, not only is this build really good, it's a, a lot like John Wick, don't you think? In the way it operates. And we were like, oh my god! Yes! Yes, this thing is just screaming John Wick. So yes, not only on top of that did we create an actual optimized monk, we were able to wrap it up in some of the coolest flavor ever. And I've got a lot of cool little tidbits waiting for you in the uh, video to come. So yes, now without further ado, let's take a look at John Braun Wick Monkstone. So I have put this setup on the screen and you can see what we're doing here. John Braun Wick Monkstone is going to be a variant human with Strength 10, Deck 16, Con 14, Intelligence 8, Wisdom 16, and Charisma 8. As always, I'll be comparing our build DPR to a standard DPR baseline of Agonizing Blast plus Hex hitting 60% of the time, and an Elite DPR baseline of a Fighter with Fighting Style Archery, Crossbow Expert, and Sharpshooter hitting 70% of the time. I'll also be coloring the DPR boxes for which I need to make assumptions, so read my giant block of qualifying text, refer to the three videos in the description, and take everything with a grain of salt, 
But generally speaking, I'll be coloring the boxes red if they are below the standard DPR baseline, yellow if they are between the standard and the elite DPR baselines, green if they are above the elite DPR baseline, and white if they are way above it, by which I mean at least 120% of it. My assumed value will be underlined for clarity, and because this build does Nova damage, I have called that out in orange. Our playstyle is as John Wick, baby! We are masters of gun fu. We like to shoot people in the face and mess them up with the chop sake. A little bit like this. Right? That looks so cool, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, note I'm not actually using firearms on this build. I think that would exclude it from too many tables. But if you do prefer to use actual firearms, it's not going to be that hard to make an adjustment. Now, this is a very playable build. Right out of the gate, it's quite strong, and it's fully online by level 6. Which means, despite being a monk build, it has solid DPR output from level 1 that gets more and more impressive as we go along. I put a chart on the screen so you can see the progression of our DPR box colors, and we can see that John Brown Wickmunk Stone is solid yellow DPR at levels 1 through 5 and at level 8. It has excellent green DPR, better than the Elite DPR baseline, at levels 6 and 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and 20, and Elite white DPR boxes better than 120% of the Elite DPR baseline from levels 13 through 19. Not only that, this DPR output is actually the floor of what it can reasonably expect in every round of every combat, despite the monk's infamous resource management issues. Plus, it still has all of those cool Nova options that we want and expect out of a monk, so this is a really effective monk build. But that said, let's talk about monk optimization for a minute. It was a tough nut to crack. The way I see it, we had to take advantage of and optimally leverage the superior maneuverability and defenses built into the kit, because the monk is actually very good on these two of the seven tactile aspects of combat. But we also had to fix, manage, optimize the two huge monk weaknesses and one small weakness. The first weakness of the monk is that it has very bad offense. It dishes out an inherently low DPR when it's not burning key points. The monk seems to be designed to use a highly limited resource to compensate for this intentionally low floor, but doing so barely brings the DPR up to par with the standard DPR baseline, let alone the Elite. And again, as a reminder, I did create that full test build of a Kensei 20 with all the DPR calculations, specifically so that I could plot out its power curve and see just how exactly it performed. And by the way, that is one of the reasons that Monk is very tough to crack, because man, there were so many calculations involved with this, because the Monk comes with like all of these different abilities, which impact the calculations in all of these different variable combinations. For example, I'm putting up on the screen a shot from one of the other iterations of Monk that I was doing. And you can see there's a lot going on there for one level. I was doing a lot of calculations for this. But still, it was worth it, because using this test build, we were able to start accurately diagnosing the issues and the timing of like what levels they came on. And ultimately we were able to apply elegant fixes. The second problem with the monk is that it has even worse resource management issues. They get extremely few key points to spread around to abilities that just cost way too much. And this creates an extremely low expected floor on average when all expected combat rounds are considered. And most monk builds, as I see it, just kind of shrug and say, well, this is built into the class. When I'm talking to people about it, they just say, well, that's just how it goes when you're a monk. And I'm not on board with that. I view this as a major problem, which not only must be solved, it can be solved. In my view, the optimized monk build must both raise its floor on average over a thousand battles and create high return on investment on its key points. We've got to manage them. You can't just throw up your hands and say, oh well. And that's why this build is actually good. We are capable of exerting a strong impact over a thousand battles. Exactly what I expect out of any optimized character. The third problem with the monk, and it's by no means anywhere near as big as the first two problems, is that it's not that amazing at the terms of engagement. It's not horrible, it's not great. It has decent initiative and stealth because it has high dexterity, 
decent perception because it has a good wisdom, but it doesn't really have much access to enhanced infiltration and detection and divination and all of that terms and engagement stuff. So it would be nice if we could do something about that as well. And we have to do all of this mechanical surgery while maintaining a strongly playable build that doesn't take forever to come online. So a lot of inherent problems to monk optimization, but that's what we do around here, and I think we've done a really good job. This build is really impressive to me. So at level one, our starting feat will go to crossbow expert for wick style face shots, and to go a long way towards addressing the monk's bad offense. And we had to start with a class that had hand crossbow proficiency, so a dip at level one was a must. Fighter also comes with con saves, which will come in handy, so we started with Fighter 1. So Crossbow Expert is a critical add for its elimination of the disadvantage penalty when attacking adjacent enemies with ranged attacks. Otherwise, we can't shoot people in the face, and we can't pull off amazing combat sequences like this one. Right? Plus, having Crossbow Expert makes it easier for us to combo our shooting with Stunning Strikes or Flurry of Blows, which, you know, of course is what we do. Now do note that the Hand Crossbow has a relatively poor range of 3120, so I would advise keeping a Longbow with 150-600 foot range, or a Heavy Crossbow with 100-400 foot range and a additional plus one damage relative to the Longbow. Keep one or both available just in case you need range. Sometimes you need it and then you'll feel pretty silly if you only have a hand crossbow. And ideally you have both, because the best option is really going to depend on the scenario. Our fighting style will be blind fighting to set up our primary strategy at later levels, but it's honestly not doing much for us yet. Unless one of our allies likes to cast Fog Cloud, and of course that would be super cool, try and make that happen. Party cooperation always wins battles. But without that, it's not going to do much. It is a nice situational defense versus creatures which impose heavy obscurement or the blinded condition, and it also helps make up for the fact that we don't have dark vision. I mean, its 10-foot radius isn't great, but that's way better than being completely blind without a light source. And if we're in that situation, we would be fine in melee, even though ranged enemies are going to be able to get perfect obscurement from us from not too far away. And Second Wind is always nice, even though it scales badly. I mean, obviously John Wick has Second Wind. Our armor will be scale mail plus dex for an average 16, and we're going to play level 1 as a typical archer. We have crossbow expert, we're going to have two attacks, those attacks will be ranged. So this is going to be a pretty strong build at level 1, even without fighting style archery. Our DPR box starts at yellow at 86% of the elite DPR baseline, because it's basically the same setup as the elite DPR baseline, except we don't have the fighting style archery. Round 1 and 2 are super simple, attack plus bonus action attack, all day long. At level 2, we take on our first monk level, and we are going to go monk for a while. Unarmored defense is online to drop our armor, because of course John Wick has unarmored defense. Look at this. Right? I mean, no change numerically from our old armor, but it's so much more appropriate from a role-playing perspective, because we're John Braun Wick Monk Stone. We don't wear armor, we wear a badass suit. Also, martial arts is online to give us an additional bonus action attack option. John Wick knows his martial arts. So martial arts actually isn't doing much for us right now. It will eventually bump both our crossbow and our martial arts damage die to a d8 at monk 11, but it's not mechanically superior to two crossbow attacks. By the way, for tremendous flavor, I thought we would just say that every point of martial arts damage you do represents a single gun fu punch, right? Like rolling six damage on your martial arts attack or your flurry of blows is like one punch for each point of damage. And that's pretty cinematically cool, right? Because like, think about how many punches and kicks and throws and stuff John Lip does in a six second action scene. I thought that might be cool for a role-playing sort of thing. But in any case, martial arts isn't really much help to us right now, at least until Key comes online, so avoid using this in critical battles. But that said, if you know that your enemy has only like one hit point left, 
there is no harm in finishing him off with like a neck break or something instead of a crossbow shot. Never hurts to finish a battle in style. No change to our DPR situation, but I did add a figure for the martial arts damage. No change to our round one and two. At level three, our key is online for Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. Flurry of Blows is a slight but noticeable and fun bump to our DPR that we will be deploying frequently throughout our career. Because we're John Brown Wickmunk Stone and we like to finish people off with a Flurry of Blows sometimes. Now it does cost a key point to do this, so it's not generally worth it in my opinion, but it is still an option, and it is part of the fun of this concept, right? I mean, it does do a little bit more damage than our standard attack sequence. Not much, but some. And it is a sneaky nice option to be able to spread your attacks out a bit. You can get plus one enemy using Flurry of Blows, because you get two attacks with that bonus action instead of just one, as with Crossbow Expert or Martial Arts. So if you need to spread your attacks out, Flurry of Blows can be good. And it'll give you more chances to land stunning strikes and stuff when we have enough key. So just remember that it costs key. We're going to be managing this. Be disciplined. I'll talk about this more as we go along. And as a reminder, I will be listing the expected Nova damage in the DPR box in orange. Technical note, do note that Flurry of Blows must come immediately after your entire attack action. We can't execute it between or before our attacks, or extra attack when we get it. And we also can't attack, and then move, and then proc Flurry of Blows. That's not immediately after the attack. However, you can move between our two blows of the Flurry of Blows, and we can move between our two attacks when we get extra attack. So it gets a little complicated, but again, we can only execute Flurry of Blows as our bonus action immediately after we complete the attack action. And I'll put a bunch of Jeremy Crawford tweets on the screen to show you how this works. We also get Patient Defense, which is an excellent option for a key point, as Dodge is one of the best bonus action options in the game. You usually can't get it as a bonus action. And being attacked at disadvantage and getting deck saves at advantage as a bonus action is super powerful. Although not if your move has been reduced to zero or you're incapacitated, then you can't use it at all. Keep that in mind. And that's really going to help with our unimpressive AC in a pinch. We're only going to use it in a pinch because it does burn key. We don't want to burn key, and we would be cutting into our offense because it clogs with our offensive bonus action options. So only as a last resort. And Step of the Wind, I don't think you should ever use. I mean, I guess you might be able to use it as a defense against kiting or something, but the disengage won't be needed much for this build, as we'll see. I honestly don't ever advise using a key point on this. We also get unarmored movement for a sweet 40-foot move speed. I mean, an always-on maneuverability bump that allows us to control the range is always my jam, and it's important to this playstyle. Finally, we get Dedicated Weapon Online to make our hand crossbow a monk weapon. That's sneaky good. It's not going to have much impact now, but it's going to provide a nice bump at next level when Key Fueled Attack comes online. It's going to be nice at monk 11 when we can bump its base damage to d8. It's sneaky good. And now at third level, our playstyle switches to full-on John Wick. Now that Key has come online, Flurry of Blows actually gives us an incentive to get up close and personal and do the whole shoot him in the face and then break their neck thing. No change to our DPR situation, although I did add a figure for our Flurry of Blows option. Our Nova right now is 10.9 damage or 115% of the elite DPR baseline. And slight change to our rounds 1 and 2, we have the option of using Flurry of Blows as our bonus action. Level 4 is a huge level for us, as we make Monk 3 and we become Shadow Monks. Shadow Arts comes online for a stack of spectacular pseudo-spell options. Each and every one of these options is strong and offers massive impact, no ribbons. It's like eating a porterhouse or something, I love it. We added Darkness, and this is so important to our build because this is going to be our primary tactic for the rest of our career. It has fantastic synergy with our fighting style blind fighting, which we took way back at level 1. John Braun Wickmunk Stone does some really good work in the Darkness.
so darkness plus blind fighting is going to create perfect obscurement that moves with us. Except, of course, versus creatures with blind sight, true sight, double sight, or tremor sets. But still, that is super awesome. And remember that the radius of blind fighting is only 10 feet. And this is the primary reason that we shoot from up close wick style. We gotta get within 10 feet of them to engage our blind sight. So not only does it make total sense for us to be up close and personal with our enemy in the darkness because of blind sight, it's also to enable the monk stuff, flurry of blows and stunning strike at next level. Adding darkness also addresses the monk's resource management problem. It's only two key points to create perfect obscurement for the entire battle. That's the kind of return on investment I'm looking for. Now we only currently have three key points. So we can only cover one combat per short rest, and I'm assuming an average of two combats per short rest, but it is going to go up at next level to where we can cover both. That's fantastic. Adding darkness also addresses the monk's bad offense problem, and at the same time buffs our defense as well. We get attacks at advantage, which is an awesome offensive bump to address our bad base DPR. We get attacked at disadvantage, which is a great defensive bump to address our unimpressive AC. Monk has pretty good defenses, but not in the AC department, so it's great to get a buff there. We are immune to Sight Spells, which is a fantastic defense that is, in my opinion, underrated. I mean, it takes a ton of spells off the table, including most spells which impose Charm or Fear. That's really good. See the video description where I'll include a couple of links to a couple of lists I made for another video. One has all of the Sight Spells on it, one has all of the non-Sight Spells on it. Darkness also makes us immune to opportunity attacks. This is important so as skirmishers we can end our move at a point where our allies are unimpeded by our darkness. Because we don't want to get in the way of what they're doing. Obviously the success of the party is the most important thing. But that said, I do want to point out, they're really not impeded all that much by our darkness unless they're using attacks at advantage or sight spells. Because remember that attacks and heavy obscurement are at normal unless one side has alert or something. So in a lot of cases, it's actually not going to get in the way. Anyway, see my deep dive series video on heavy obscurement for more information. I honestly think it's one of my best videos, so definitely check it out. And also note we don't always have to go with darkness. We can also just hang back and use pure range when appropriate. That would sacrifice our DPR in a lot of cases, but it might also generate auto wins in a lot of cases. So, you know, it's nice to have options. Now, note that darkness does take an action to cast, but we get key fueled attack. So that means we can still make a hand crossbow attack on the same round that we cast darkness. Still, you do want to pre-buff this, and it does have a 10 minute duration, which helps with that. Might last multiple combats. But overall, darkness is a huge, awesome, fantastic add for us. That's what makes level four so good. But there's more. We also get dark vision, which is fantastic because we don't have dark vision. And dark vision has an eight hour duration and no concentration and we get our key back on a short rest, so that means we can short rest trick this, cover ourselves, cover our allies, cover our mounts, get everybody on dark vision, and then we'll get our key back. That is really super good. And then on top of that, we get Pass Without Trace. That's awesome! This is one of the best Terms of Engagement buffs in 5th edition. Remember, the monk isn't generally amazing at Terms of Engagement, so to add Pass Without Trace is such a buff there. Oh, so good. Use aggressively, Pass Without Trace can generate surprise conditions in any pre-buff scenario. And we need to talk a minute about how often that happens. Pre-buffing is a thing, but how often? I talk to people in my Discord, and based on that, I estimate that it's about half the time if you're paying attention to the terms of engagement. And so half the time, if you can get surprised with Pass Without Trace, that is so sneaky good. And again, we cast it with Key, which recharges on a short rest. That means we can spam this even during overland travel. And we can do that immediately. It's a viable option right now. Yes, it's a little bit clunky. You're going to have to short rest a lot. But that's just at this level, and as we level, it's going to get easier and easier. So that is so nice to add Pass Without Trace. And obviously, John Wick can be a pretty stealthy dude when he wants to be, and get the drop on an enemy. Adding Silence is awesome, as a fantastic caster FU option. 
We can combo this with an ally who can create a grapple or a restrained or control somehow, and we can shut them down in the same round. That's a really nice option to have. Silence, man. I am very happy to have this in my back pocket. And finally, we get a cantrip, and it just happens to be the best cantrip in 5th edition, in my opinion. So yeah, Shadow Arts. No ribbons. Minor Illusion is amazing as an always available panic button defensive option. It offers amazing utility. See my Deep Dive series video on Major Image for more info on Illusions. But overall, Shadow Arts is just fantastic. All of these ads are huge for us. Then for just our Monk abilities, we add Deflect Missiles, which is great. It's a spammable reaction versus ranged attacks that's going to reduce or eliminate their damage. That's awesome! We were already elite in melee, but we didn't have any real advantages versus ranged attackers until now, because our blind sight is only 10 feet. Now we can catch their missiles, and we don't have to spend any key. That is fantastic, and kind of surprising. Seems like monks spend key on everything. So even though our blind fighting only gives us 10 foot blind sight, we're going to have a defense from incoming attacks, even though we can't see them. It does work against nets. Don't forget that if anyone tries to get cute with you. But do note that the key point cost and return on investment of throwing the missile back is not that great. Unless you are catching darts, that's kind of an unusual case. But if you caught darts, then you'd be able to do some damage with them. I guess that might make sense. So you don't generally want to do this. Even though Crossbow Expert does eliminate the disadvantage penalty of targeting adjacent enemies with the retaliation attack, it's just not a very good use of key. That said, I guess sometimes, like, one extra reaction ranged attack might make the difference. Pretty bad range, 2060, but if the enemy's at one hit point, right, it could make the difference. And it just sounds like a really fun and flashy thing to do sometimes, right? I mean, we could fool around in some battles. I mean, we can admit that not every battle is life or death, right? We do have some room to play around. Plus, we have to ask ourselves, would John Wick be able to catch and throw back a knife? Hmm? Huh? So yeah, Deflect Missiles is online. Finally, we also get Key Fueled Attack online. I already talked about this with Darkness. It has that synergy where we can do the Darkness thing and then we get an attack. It also works if we're doing the Silence thing. And it's nice here that our dedicated weapon is our Hand Crossbow. Our DPR box stays yellow but drops to 82% of the Elite DPR baseline. Flurry of Blows now does 110% of the Elite DPR baseline. Our DPR dipped as the target AC increased and our attack bonus didn't, but we did switch to the at advantage figure because of darkness and blind fighting being online. In any case, we couldn't quite catch up because the elite DPR baseline added sharpshooter and that's a pretty huge DPR bump. So our round one and two are a little bit different if we pre-buffed or not. If we don't pre-buff, then we're going to definitely cast darkness in the first round and we do get a bonus action key fueled attack. If we have pre-buff, then we're just going to keep doing what we always do, which is attack and attack some more. At level 5, we add another level of Monk and are now Monk 4s. Slowfall is online as a solid situational defensive ability. You never know when it might come in handy. And Quicken Healing is online for solid out-of-combat heals. But the key requirement is bad, it's really low ROI. Only use this immediately prior to a short rest. That said, it is nice if you have key left just prior to that short rest, and if you combo it with second wind, you can get some pretty decent hit point regeneration if short rests are fairly abundant at your table. More importantly, we get our first ASI, which we will devote to Sharpshooter for a huge DPR bump. Gotta have pretty good aim if you're playing a John Wick build, huh? Sharpshooter is going to eliminate the long range penalties for both our crossbow and our deflect missiles counterattack, not to mention our backup weapons of longbow and heavy crossbow. So those now have epic range. Sharpshooter will eliminate the targeting penalties for half or three quarters cover. We can apply the power attack to darts if we can catch them and retaliate with the deflect missiles thing. Only darts, 
ammo is considered an improvised weapon, and like all the other stuff, are th melee throwing weapons, so it only works with darts, but maybe. But more importantly, Sharpshooter is awesome when you have attacks at advantage, which we happen to get from our darkness and blind fighting combo. That more or less eliminates the attack penalty for power attacking. That means we are going to be getting a lot of plus 10 damage hits out there, and that's why our DPR took a nice jump up. I did include the formula for when you should pull the trigger on power attack. It's when the target AC is less than 16 plus your attack bonus minus half your average regular damage on one hit, or when you have attacks at advantage. So we're not going to have to be doing any calculating. Just do it all the time we have the darkness up. See my deep dive series video on Great Weapon Master and Sharpshooter for more information about that formula and all that. We also bumped to four key points, which is fantastic for this build. We now have enough key to cover two combats per short rest. That's exactly where we want to be. This establishes a strong floor for us for the rest of our career. As long as we start the day with four key points, we are going to be able to use it in every expected battle. Again, I'm expecting two combats per short rest. Like I alluded to at the last level, this is our solution to the monk's resource management problem. We now have a reserve base of only four key points that's going to provide a strong DPR floor in all battles. That's exactly what you don't expect out of a monk. From now on, the key points that we add in addition to this base reserve that we're keeping, I'm going to call them bonus key points. And these bonus key points are what we're going to use to start mixing in all of the fun stuff. So by separating our key points into the four reserve points and then all of the extra bonus points, we're going to be able to do all of the stuff we want to do with our monk without sacrificing our combat effectiveness over a thousand battles. That's the sort of thing that I like to do in a build. And note that this is even better if my assumptions are off and maybe your party short rests after every combat. That's not unusual. And in that case, you only need two key points in reserve and you have even more bonus key points. Now remember your reserve points all go to darkness, but when it comes to your bonus key points, note that the highest return on investment for these bonus key points is going to be focused aim at the next level. Because then you can turn sharpshooter power attack misses into hits on a targeted basis, and then we can stick that 10 bonus damage whenever we really need it. So that's definitely the best way to use our bonus key points. Another great thing to use them on are our utility spells, like Pass Without Trace and Dark Vision and Silence and stuff. And the lowest return on investment is using bonus key points on Flurry of Blows, Stunning Strike, or the Deflect Missiles Retaliation. Now again, these options do have a positive net impact, it's just a marginal net impact. That's not to say that you can't use these, just be aware that the ROI isn't great. Still, they do have a positive net impact, and they are hella fun, and that's what we're doing here, right? Having fun. And that's the great thing about this approach and having such a high floor using darkness and our reserve key points, because we're going to be able to play around and do a lot of stuff that is fun and effective. Because I've got nothing against fun, but why not both? Our DPR box stays yellow, but does bump to 86% of the elite DPR baseline. And Flurry of Blows drops to only 98% of the Elite DPR baseline. We added Sharpshooter to get a solid DPR bump, but the Elite DPR baseline added extra attack, so they pulled away a little. At level 6, we add Monk 5, and this is a huge level for us, as the build is now basically fully online. We get extra attack online to boost our DPR, and we get Stunning Strike, the iconic Monk attack. That doesn't work all that often. It's high risk, high reward, only 30% effectiveness or so based on the stats from Critical Role. But it's fun to try and the payoff is huge if you succeed. I mean, John Wick does do stunning strikes. <laughs> right, so every now and then it can be fun to pull that off. It does burn key. Use it discretion, be disciplined. Even though you can get multiple attempts with Flurry of Blows, you gotta be disciplined. Wait till we get more bonus key points. And Stunning Strike gives us another reason to get up close and personal. You wanna be stunning, folks. And it can actually be pretty good. I mean, it does present a very high threat level. If you can land it, BBEGs will blow their legendary resistance to shake it off. 
This can open up holes in their defenses for our ally casters to take advantage of. So I'm really excited to add Stunning Strike here. Yes, it's high risk, high reward, but when it goes off, it's going to be hella fun. We also get Focused Aim online for an elite situational ability to turn misses into hits. I mean, obviously, John Wick has Focused Aim. As noted, it has fantastic synergy with sharpshooter power attacks. We can definitely get that plus 10 damage bump on more occasions when we need it. It does burn key, but it is the highest return on investment of any bonus key point option. If we were being optimal about it, we would literally reserve all of our bonus key points for this one, focused aim. We would ignore flurry of blows and stunning strike, but obviously we're not gonna do that, right? We're still gonna be stunning and flurry of blowing just be aware, Focused Aim gets you a good ROI on your key points. Our DPR box now bumps to green at 109% of the Elite DPR baseline. Our Flurry of Blows does 118%. We added extra attack, which is huge for a build, and even though the Elite DPR baseline added Dex plus 2, we go green and have surpassed it. Slight change to our Round 1 and 2 as we added Stunning Strike as an option, and note that we currently have one bonus key point per short rest, not counting our reserve key points of four. Remember, be disciplined. At level seven, we go Monk six and add Shadow Step. Shadow Step is an Amazeballs bonus action teleport, always available and doesn't burn key points. So good for a Monk. Don't tell Wizards of the Coast, because I totally bet they forgot. This one is too good to not cost key, right? This has fantastic synergy with our own darkness it's going to enable it consistently. If we don't have the darkness up, we can teleport to lots of different areas within 60 feet. But when we have our darkness up, we can teleport within range of our blind sight, which is only 10 feet. But come on guys, a 10 foot teleport at will is still hella useful. Just as an example, you can escape grapples and restrainment, but come on, there's all sorts of things you can do with this. It's really good. One of the very best abilities that Shadow Monk gets and it's online at level 7. Oh, so good. We also get Key Empowered Strike here, which might make a difference. It makes our martial arts attacks inherently magical, and it's probably going to be pretty hard to get a magical hand crossbow. So against creatures with resistance or immunity to non-magical attacks, Key Empowered Strike might be good. And we get a plus 5 bump to our move, which is always sneaky nice. No change to our DPR situation. No change to our round 1 and 2. We now have two bonus key points. At level 8, Evasion is online for a nice defensive bump versus deck saves. I mean, Evasion is sweet when you pull it off, and you're definitely taking less damage. And Stillness of Mind is a decent defense versus Charm and Fear. Do note that it does take an action, and that can be problematic because a lot of effects that we'd like to use this on are going to take away our action, like Fear or Hypnotic Pattern or Dominate Person, but still, nice to have in our back pocket. Our DPR box drops back down to yellow at 89% of the Elite DPR baseline. Flurry of Blows doing only 100% of the Elite DPR baseline. Because our DPR dipped as our target AC increased and our attack bonus didn't, and the Elite DPR baseline added Dex plus 2. But have no fear, this is officially the last level that we are below the Elite DPR baseline. We're above it for the rest of our career after this. No change to our round 1 and 2, and we now have 3 bonus key points per short rest. At level 9, we add another Monk level to be Monk 8. We get an ASI, which we use to bump our Dex. That's our combat stat and will bump our AC. And that Dex bump is enough to put us back at a green DPR box at 109% of the Elite DPR baseline. Our Flurry of Blows Nova now does 122% of the Elite DPR baseline. At level 10, we add a Ranger level. Finally starting to multi-class. With Ranger 1, we get Deft Explorer from which we'll take Canny and Favored Foe. Canny is going to give us expertise in a skill which we are going to put in Athletics to buff our grappling skills, because obviously John Wick is pretty good at grappling. Now note that adding a Ranger gets us a new skill, so we can add Athletics at this point if we don't already have it. And we can now execute the caster killing silence plus grapple combo all by ourselves. We don't necessarily need an ally to help out with that, especially once we get to level 14 and add action surge. 
That's pretty sweet. Right now we still do need an ally to help us do it in one round though. But still our athletics check is good now. It's currently plus eight, which is the same as our primary attacks. And it's actually going to scale even faster than our primary attacks from this point forward. So that's great. I mean, combined with darkness, which we use all the time and shuts down a caster's sight spells, we're a pretty effective mage slayer at this point. John Wick, man. I will say that stealth and expertise can be good alternatives for your expertise. I mean, if you find yourself sneaking around all the time, stealth might be good. It does have anti-synergy with Pass Without Trace, but it also doesn't burn key points, so I can see choosing that. And also, perception might also be great. I mean, some tables you make a gazillion perception checks, or you might be at a table where having a high passive perception is really important. Maybe you're fighting a lot of invisible stuff. And adding expertise to perception would make it pretty good. Our passive would immediately become 21, it would bump to 23 at level 13, 25 at level 17, that's pretty fantastic, and that's a pretty good Terms of Engagement buff, so buffing the monk's Terms of Engagement is never a bad thing. I can totally see choosing Expertise and Perception. Ranger 1 also gets us Favored Foe, which can give us a decent DPR bump as a free action, so that's always good on a monk. Using it can help us preserve bonus key points. But ideally you never have to use it, because you can't stack it with Darkness, they both use your concentration, and you did save your reserve key points, right? You were disciplined and you didn't get tempted into doing one more stunning strike, right? Well, if you did, you've got favored foe to back you up. <laughs> no change to our DPR situation, no change to our round 1 and 2, and at this level we still have 4 bonus key points. At level 11, we add a second level of Ranger to give us fighting style archery and some spells. Fighting style archery is awesome for an archer like us that gives us a great DPR bump. And we get some spells, so I'm adding Goodberry and Absorb Elements here. Goodberry for healing between the scenes, because of course John Wick has superhuman endurance. I'm going to reskin these as reds. And remember, with Goodberry it has a 24 hour duration. That is so amazing for rest tricking. Remember to always dump any remaining spell slots into Goodberry just prior to a long rest, and then you're going to have them all day long. This is just one of the best spells in 5th edition. I'm really happy to add it here. And we get Absorb Elements, an elite defensive reaction. I'm super pumped to add this too. Now our DPR box is still green, but it dips a little bit. We're barely green at 102% of the elite DPR baseline, and Flurry of Blows only does 105% of the elite DPR baseline, because even though we added Fighting Style Archery to bump our DPR, the elite DPR baseline added extra attack times 3, so they caught up a little bit. Not quite, we're still in front, but they got closer. No change to our round 1 and 2, still 4 bonus key points per short rest. At level 12, we add a third level of Ranger to become Swarm Keepers. To our spells known, we add Speak with Animals and Fog Cloud. Speak with Animals came with the class through Primal Awareness, but it's situationally useful. We do get one free use per day, though be aware we would have to use slots to cast it again after that since we're not ritual casters. But believe it or not, Speak with Animals is not such a bad thing to add to a John Wick build. Huh? Huh? Speak with Animals, it's online. We also add Fog Cloud, this is going to be our backup number one, versus enemies that have True Sight and Devil Sight. They can see through our darkness, but they can't see through our fog cloud. Because that's similar to what we already do and what we're optimized for. It just defeats more enemies. Still, it is still defeated by blind sight and tremor sense. So we are going to have a backup number two, which we'll talk about in a minute. First, I want to point out that our three optional ranger spells ended up as Goodberry, Absorb Elements, and Fog Cloud. Feel free to pick different spells if you prefer. I think Entangle, Longstrider, Zephyr Strike, and Hunter's Mark are interesting alternative options. You're not locked into the spells that I chose, but I do think these are the best. More importantly, our Ranger subclass is online to become Swarm Keepers, but we are going to reskin this as Gunfu Master. The Swarm Keeper is the most mechanically synergistic and powerful option, so the most optimal option, but I'm really not a fan of the flavor here, so I'm going to be heavily reskinning these abilities. Swarm Keeper is Gunfu Master, and Gathered Swarm is going to be Gun Kata. And Gun Kata is online for a stack of great abilities. Noting that you do only get to choose one per round, but great Gun Kata options here in damage plus d6 piercing, 
You can impose a strength save versus a 15 foot push or pull in any direction. And note that this works even with our ranged attacks. Or we can take 5 foot of forced move applied to ourselves. That basically creates a free disengage without having to burn any key points. That can be pretty good on this build if we're fighting something that can defeat our darkness. And we are adding Swarm Keeper magic, which I am reskinning as Arcane Assassin. And this adds two excellent spells. Fairy Fire is going to be an excellent option versus invisible enemies and creatures that can see through our fog cloud. This gives us a second backup that's pretty solid. Our save DC is only two below par. It's a mere 10% reduction in efficiency. That's fine for a second backup tactic. We also get Mage Hand here. It's a solid cantrip for range utility, especially for a mostly non-caster, so it's nice to add. However, I will say that if you don't like the Swarm Keeper, you think it clashes with the concept or whatever, you're welcome to choose a different subclass. It's really not that important to the build in the big picture. I think Gloomstalker or the Hunter Colossus Slayer could be interesting options. The Gloomstalker does come with some anti-synergies, but the synergies that it does have are pretty strong, and that's enough to be appealing. And the Hunter Colossus Slayer does get a bonus damage rider. It's a D8, some minor limitations, but pretty good, but it doesn't get a push or a disengage or fairy fire, so I do think that Swarm Keeper is better here. Our DPR box stays at green at 110% of the elite DPR baseline. Our Flurry of Blows is doing 114% of it because we added Gun Kata, and I'm just assuming that we're going to choose to add the damage plus D6. No change to our round one and two, still four bonus key points. At level 13, we add a fourth level of Ranger to get an ASI, which we will use to add Dex plus two to max out our God stat. Our DPR box bumps to white at 125% of the elite DPR baseline. Flurry of Blows doing 130% because we added Dex plus two. That was enough to do it. No change to our round one and two. Still four bonus key points per short rest. At level 14, we add a second level of fighter to bring Action Surge online. We now have that sweet, sweet Nova goodness. We can get off four hand crossbow attacks and one flurry of blows as our maximum attack output. And so that's going to be my assumed figure. And we can now execute the silence plus grapple combo in only one round. I can honestly think of about a bajillion other builds that a caster would probably rather fight than us because we're protected by darkness on the approach and then we can just pop action surge and silence and grapple them. Yeah, that's not good for them. No change to our DPR situation. I did put a figure for the Action Surge Nova on there, which is about 71 damage right now. Pretty sweet. No change to our round one and two. Still four bonus key points per short rest. At level 15, we are back to adding monk levels and we go monk the rest of the way. Our unarmored move bumps to pseudo spider climb slash water walk during our move. I always love a sweet maneuverability bump. Now, it doesn't replicate a fly speed or spider climb or anything because of the inability to stay on the wall. You have to end up back on the ground, but it still will allow us to skirmish better. And it's really cool and it's awesome for a monk to get that kind of thing. Then at level 16, we make monk 10 and add purity of body, making us immune to disease and poison. And that's fine by me. I'm a defensive minded player. So poison immunity. Yeah, bring that on. That's always great. Poison is the most common damage type after bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, so yeah. And we get another move bump. We're moving 50 feet per round now. Awesome. No change to our DPR situation. No change to our round one and two. We now have six bonus key points per short rest. At level 17, we make Monk 11 and Cloak of Shadows is online for a no concentration invisibility at will, except in bright light, of course. But this is obviously sensational. Even though it requires an action to use, you're not going to be using this in combat. It's for the exploration and interactions phase. Got great synergy with Pass Without Trace and Stealth Expertise if you ended up taking it. Great synergy with Shadow Step, which works in the same environments. No drain on key points. Yeah, this is all awesome sauce. It's also a nice level for us in that our Martial Arts Damage Die does bump to D8. And remember that our hand crossbow is a monk weapon, via a dedicated weapon. So we're going to get a boost to D8 across the board for our hand crossbow and our martial arts. That's sweet. And it does bump our DPR. We're still white, but we're now at 132% of the elite DPR baseline. And Flurry of Blows is now doing 140%. 
of the Elite DPR baseline. No change to our round one and two, but we now have seven bonus key points per short rest. At level 18, we make Monk 12 and add an ASI, which we will devote to Eldritch Adept Devil Sight for sweet synergy with our darkness. Now we couldn't add it before now because it has a spell casting prerequisite, so we needed to get to Ranger level two, and we could have added it at Ranger four, which was level 13, but at that point we really needed to catch up on maxing out our decks. So we couldn't take it then, but it is still a great add, even coming on so late. 120 foot range is just an amazeballs upgrade to the 10 foot radius blind sight that we've been used to. I mean, this is going to allow us to see entirely through our own darkness, which we couldn't really before unless we placed it right. And we can gain those advantages all the way out to 120 feet. Oh, that's so sweet. It doesn't completely replace blind fighting. That will still be useful versus atmospheric effects like fog and smoke, versus illusions, versus invisible enemies, things like that. But man, double sight is really nice to add here. No change to our DPR situation. No change to our round one and two. We now have eight bonus key points per short rest. At level nine, we add Monk 13 to bring Tongue of the Sun and Moon online. Isn't always on tongues, and that's a sneaky, nice little ability for the interaction phase. I mean, our charisma sucks, but at least we can talk to people. No change to our DPR situation. No change to our round one and two, but we have nine bonus key points per short rest now. And finally, at level 20, we make Monk 14, and as our capstone, add Diamond Soul. This is a nice way to finish out. We get that sweet bump to saves, proficiency across the board, and a reroll. Oh, that's fantastic. We get another little move bump to 55 foot move, and our slow fall damage is now reduced by 70. That's the average of a maximum 20 d6 fall in 5th edition, so that's kind of cool, I think. Our DPR box does drop back down to green at 106% of the Elite DPR baseline. Flurry of Blows doing 112% because the Elite DPR baseline added extra attack times 3 and that clearly closes the gap a little bit. They still couldn't catch up to us, so we're doing just fine and pretty happy with our DPR box color progression. So that's it. That's John Braun with Monk Stone. My take on a monk, my optimization of it, and... I'm curious to hear what everybody has to say about it. I am so proud of this build. I think we did a really great job. I think we were able to buck expectations and create a fantastic build, mechanically speaking, and dripping with role-playing flavor. This thing is so John Wicky. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This has been Build Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Brown Bafflestone. See you next time.